Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Can't wait to get into today's episode 3161. I mentioned the episode number and that is because this is a part two of last week's show on all of the different reasons for skin itchiness. Now I'm telling you right now, and you could add this a little bit skin rashes in there as well, but there are a lot of people out there suffering from all sorts of health-based issues. We try to cover every single one of them on the Cabral Concept. We've done over 3,000 shows now. If you have a health-based ailment and haven't found the underlying root cause, understand that there is always an underlying root cause. There is always an answer. You can search your keyword at stephencabral.com slash podcast. Type in anything you'd like lupus, Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, adrenal-based issues, skin rashes, headaches, migraines, and you will find shows on all those different topics. Today, what I wanted to do, whether you tuned into last week or not, last week was 11 different reasons why people have skin itchiness-based issues. Now, remember, this show may not always be for you, but in the future, a child, a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, a coworker may have this issue because many people do. You're going to be able to then point them to the show or maybe even give them the answer. So last week, 11 different reasons. Some of those were things you may not have heard about before, like believe it or not, dehydration can be a reason for skin itchiness. Okay, that's a simple one. Good. So you talk to your kids, especially grandparents, people over the age of 65, 70, sometimes drink less water. So it's an important one. But it can also be things like nerve-based degeneration, or it can be histamine-based issues. And then I give you all the details on that, all 11 last week at stephencabal.com slash 3154. But really, the number you want to remember today for all of, I'm going to give you nine different nutrient deficiencies. Easy to fix. Honestly, super easy to fix. I'll share with you in just a moment. But the show notes today are at stephencabral.com slash 3161. stephencabral.com slash 3161. Let's dive into the show. The first nutrient deficiency that can lead to skin itchiness is a vitamin D deficiency. This is important because when you go to have your blood work run, you'll look at what's called 25-hydroxy vitamin D. The issue is that with conventional medicine, the range is from 30 to 100, sometimes 30 to 80. But the sweet spot for a functionally optimal level of vitamin D is between 50 and 70, maybe 50 to 80. But it is not 32, where a lot of people show up, or 37. The average individual that I see in my practice is between a 32 and a 37 before they come to us. Because on their regular labs, they said, oh, it's totally normal. It's not. It's a number <laughs> below 30. Yes, that is then diagnosable as a serious deficiency in vitamin D that can lead to bone health and other issues. But it affects so much more, like your immune system. I'm not going to go all into them today because I've done many shows of vitamin D, but it can also cause dry skin and itchiness. So let's optimize those vitamin D levels, but let's get it between a 50 and a 70. I'll give you an easy way to test your vitamins and minerals uh, in, in just a little bit. All right, the second one, it's one of my favorite, one of my favorite vitamins, right? There's a lot of different vitamins. There's a lot of different nutrients. This is vitamin B6, uh, paradoxin. And, and why is this so important? Or, or why do I care about it so much? Well, it was one of the number one nutrients that I needed in order to prove my own health. Because I'd always heard about vitamin B12, methylcobalamin. I'd even heard about, you know, methylfolate. This is many, many years ago before it was like a, a you know, cool thing to talk about. But my mentor taught me about vitamin B6, which helps B12, B9, which is folate, uh, and something called trimethylglycine help us for methyl donors. But it also helps with serotonin. And if it helps with serotonin, it also helps with melatonin. So it's amazing to help calm my nervous system and help with sleep. You don't even need a lot of it. And so when I started to use it, I started to feel actually better. So amazing thing. But one of the interesting things is not enough vitamin B6, it can lead to skin-based inflammation, red patches, and much more. Okay, so number three on the list is zinc deficiency. It could go right along with copper because zinc and copper really balance each other and they're both really important for the skin. But one of the big things is that a lot of these are known for different things. Zinc is really known for the immune system. But if you don't have enough zinc, it is in what's called an anabolic mineral. So it's a mineral that helps repair 
muscle tissue, improves hormones, and so much more. But it is absolutely vital for the health of your skin and skin integrity. So when there's low levels of zinc, you're much more prone to fungal-based overgrowth and other skin-based rashes. So zinc is absolutely on my list. And again, these don't need you need, mean you need big doses of these. So for vitamin D, we'll just go through that. Most adults, they need about 4,000 or so IUs per day. Somewhere between 2,500 and 5,000 IUs we've seen in our practice. That's about um, 25 micrograms to 125 micrograms. Uh, we typically do 4,000 IUs for most adults, and then they'll get a little in other supplements as well. For B6, 25 to maybe 50 milligrams maximum per day. Zinc, somewhere around 30 milligrams. Most adults do really well with, up to 50 maximum. Uh, and then you can use more if you had an uh, immune-based uh, issue for a short period of time. This next one is essential fatty acids. Specifically, we'll talk about omega-3s. Omega-3s are one of the best nutrients that we've used in our practice with a Mediterranean diet, as well as omega-3 supplementation in order to be able to improve overall skin. And the reason is actually very straightforward, is that omega-3s, so a good quality omega-3, helps to balance what are called eicosanoids. And it helps with leukotrienes, it helps with thromboxanes, it helps with prostaglandins. These are just inflammatory factors in your body. And downstream, you end up with higher cytokines, histamines, etc. So, when you're dealing with skin itchiness and skin rashes, omega-3s are one of the very best things. We do this, we work with children, we work with adults, we're always using, in case we're, we're testing first, but we're using zinc and we're using omega-3s. Uh, on the list is not specifically magnesium, but that helps with the nervous system. And it really does work phenomenally well, that and vitamin D. All right, the next one we don't supplement with unless we find there's a need, and that's iron. So if someone has an iron-based deficiency, we will absolutely use a healthy form of iron, including a higher iron food diet. And then we will test in eight to 12 weeks to make sure that their iron levels look good. Now, iron levels are not typically tested with at-home lab testing. They're usually tested with a blood draw, and that is looking at their ferritin levels, total iron binding capacity, saturation rate, et cetera. So that's a great one to run. Um, always run your ferritin or transferritin with your total iron and binding capacity, TIBC. Usually a lot of doctors will only run TIBC. All right, the next one is vitamin A. I just wanted to share two parts of this. So if your vitamin A levels are too low, it can cause issues almost like you would see with low iron. You can have um, almost like pale skin or pallor, uh, I don't want to get into the fatigue because we're talking about the skin right now, but with low vitamin A, it could be dryness, flakiness of the skin, and like patchiness of the skin. The issue is if you have too much vitamin A, not from food, but from a synthetic form of the supplement, which would be more like a uh, retinol form instead of a beta carotene form, it could actually cause patches oftentimes around the mouth as well. So if you're getting skin rashes around your mouth, that can actually sometimes be from vitamin A toxicity. It can happen with certain medications, but it can also happen with uh, the retinol form of supplementation. So be careful going too high in vitamin A for too long. We always recommend the beta carotene form, of course, so it's more natural. All right, the next one is vitamin E deficiency. Vitamin E, we've known for a long time. You can apply it topically to scars, scar tissue, and it can work really well. Red spots on the face, maybe from acne marks. But one of the reasons why vitamin E is so important is that it's also a very powerful antioxidant. So if there's uh, lipid peroxides, there's um, oxidation going in the body, leading to potentially inflammation that can lead to skin itchiness. Vitamin E, it's not the end all be all, but a really powerful vitamin, fat soluble vitamin that actually works to help combat oxidative stress and inflammation. All right, we named one other B vitamin, and that was vitamin B6. This next one, vitamin B3, very important as well. And no, it cannot be in the NAD, nicotinamide riboside, nicotinamide mononucleotide form. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. But these are those are essentially derivatives. I know that's not the exact word we would use for it, of B3. Now, both are great. 
and I use both, right? And so they're both great, but you need B3 as niacin. Now you can get the non-flush form, of course, but niacin is, is, niacin is very important for overall skin health. So anyone with the vitamin E, but also B3, the niacin deficiency, could have dermatitis-based issues, cracked skin, cracking at the corners of the mouth, um, itchy skin, and I think that those are worth noting as well. The last one that may not be on your list that you've heard about before is selenium. Selenium, I'll say it, it really harkens back to a, let's look at it as a zinc of vitamin E. It is a very powerful antioxidant in its own right, even though it's a mineral, right? So this mineral helps with your thyroid. It helps overall with the nervous system. It's known as an anti-cancer nutrient, not that we're given any medical advice, medical cures, medical treatment, or medical diagnosis, but it can help, like many of these others, with the itchiness of a dermatitis, of an eczema, of a, psori a psoriasis, et cetera. So it's not, these nutrient deficiencies may be the underlying root cause of your skin itchiness, there's no doubt about it, or it might be part of the greater fix. And so what I always urge people to do, if you want to look at your, all of your vitamins and minerals and potential deficiencies, there's an at-home lab test that you can do that's a couple snips of hair that looks at your mineral levels. That's an easy way to look at minerals because you simply turn the hair into an ash, so not you, but the lab, and they assess it for the mineral and heavy metal content, just like they look at foods. So it's an easy way to look at the excretion of the minerals in your body. What does the body use? What is it encountered? What's it excreting? And then there's a urine-based test that comes along with the vitamin tox test that looks at your vitamin levels. That looks at used vitamins, your B vitamins that we just spoke about, your gut health, and so much more. So I absolutely recommend that. We call our starter kit, but it's called the Vitamin Tox Test. You can find that at stephencabral.com slash starter dash kit. stephencabral.com slash starter dash kit. It is a great way to assess your specific nutrient deficiencies. And so I, like I said, I absolutely recommend that. But also, this kind of seemed like a lot today that we went over. But I'll tell you right now, most functional medicine brand formulas, and you always want to go with the functional medicine brand. I, of course, formulate for Equalife. I third-party test Equalife. I stand behind Equalife. We use the daily nutritional support, or we use the daily activated multivitamin. That one product will actually give you everything on this list that you need at the full dosage, except you may need a little bit more vitamin D, which most likely you will. That's an inexpensive product, probably about a dollar a day maximum for your vitamin D dose. And uh, you'll also want to add a omega-3. So besides that, you're really covered. And so when you look at that, okay, you add your omega-3s, you add your vitamin D, and then you use something like a daily activated multivitamin or the daily nutritional support. Now, again, you don't have to use Equal Life. That's okay. But like, I just want to share with people how easy this is for a fix. And you could use, and you can just compare the ingredients for what we use that we know works with another company, maybe of your favorite brand or your integrative health practitioner or your naturopathic doctor, whatever they may recommend. And the nice thing is this, is that if you shore up these nutritional deficiencies and you, and let's say you lab test it, okay, you shore them up, you might need a little bit more zinc, a little bit more, whatever your practitioner shares with you. Okay. You've now eliminated one possible underlying root cause. And so you say that's done. I already added my two grams of omega-3s with my daily omega-3. I've added my daily, let's call it nutritional support, and my vitamin D at, at um, the 100 micrograms a day. Good. So that's it. That may get rid of it completely in the next four to eight weeks. But at 12 weeks, you're like, hey, I still have a little bit left. Okay. Then we'll keep that going, but we'll search for like what, what could be the next thing. When you ran that vitamin tox test, were there heavy metals like mercury aluminum? Okay, that could be a reason. Or like we talked about last week, you're not getting enough fluids. Let's make sure we get that in with the maybe a pinch of sea salt and a little bit of a squeeze of lime, like a lime in there to get some of those electrolytes in. So it, we, by process of elimination is what I'm sharing with you. You're always able to figure out what the underlying root cause is to what's ailing you. So hopefully today's show was helpful. All the details will be at stephencabral.com slash 3161. If it was helpful, please do feel free to share this with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. 
Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.